And here we are on a tie cat Tuesday in which, uh, look, this has been a, a season that uh, is not the way that they want to have it started. But trust me, no one knows more than the guy we're going to talk to because he wears his heart on his sleeve. And that's why uh, he is the leader of this team. And that's why, you know, you watch those games game and out. No one gives more than this guy. And we have Dane Evans, quarterback for your Hamilton Tiger Cats. Dane, how are you doing this morning? Man, I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Excited to be on here. So thank you. Well, we we you know have talked over uh and certainly with uh, the the guys over the last couple of years and you know the, it's been so difficult to find consistency just in our life i mean for you like going to, like where were you living like in those last couple of years for you your family just trying to be organized and i i know your dad's a big part of your life i mean you're a big family guy what was the last couple of years like for you uh yeah it was tough i mean just like everybody else though you know um so when COVID started and all that, the lockdown started, my wife and I were living in California at the time, um, which is where she's from. Um, so then that was, that was actually, it was really fun at the beginning. And then it kept <laughs> going and going and going, you know, uh, and then in the middle of COVID, we moved to Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma, which is where we both went to college. Um, so that's kind of like our home base. Now we, we, uh, we, think that's going to be where we settle down and all that but uh the last off season we elected to stay up here after the great cup last year um we it was our first time to stay up here through the entire uh off season so we got a true canadian winter it was super cold i've never seen that much snow um but yeah you're right it's just there's been a lot of change um and the consistency has been i guess only consistency is change you know what i mean so yeah. that's the only thing that's been the same well, it's 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 one thing too, you know, when when also you're you're looking forward to a season, you get hurt, you sort of come in. Um, it, it's been difficult, just I I think sometimes getting your 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 feet on the ground. But as you say, you know that the constant is is change in our lives, and which is what we have. So so when you take a look at where where the Thai Cats are now, and I realize there's a lot of disappointment probably in your mind. You're still thinking two and two, but I know I know, and what we know of you, and certainly when I've talked to you beforehand. But even two and two is probably not going to be something that you overly would be excited about. So, so let's. I mean, we we've got to get sort of back and in, in your heads around where you want to be, and that and that's not a five hundred football team because that's what you that's not something that you strive for. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, we don't get me wrong. In this situation, if we were two and two, it would be better, but it wouldn't be what we want, like you're saying. Um, and we know that in every game we played we've been in it. Um, we talked about it this week, um, yesterday that, uh, or two days ago that we looked at all our scores from halftime and then like into the third or fourth quarter. And, uh, we've either been leading or down by a point, you know what I mean? And, um, we just got to figure out how to really finish ball games is what we've been working on. Um, but with all that being said, it is easy to get down on yourself and all that stuff, but, the biggest thing that I think everyone needs to realize and that we we realize as players, yes, we, we need to start winning, no doubt, but the whole East isn't winning. So we're still a, a game out of first place, right? And we're about to go on a, a large run right here against teams against in the East. Um, so these are obviously super important games, much like every game is. But um, with everything that's happened, we, everything that we want to do this season is still in front of us. And we, we definitely believe and we think we have the guys in the room to go out and get that done. Yeah, this is this is far from a lost season. And 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 this is, you know, I, I mean, look, there are a lot of examples. I could even go to Major League Baseball where Seattle was terrible at the beginning of the year. They're now, I mean, the Baltimore Orioles that were supposed to be a joke are now in the same category as the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox and Tampa. You know, they didn't give up on themselves. And so when I look at situations like this, and you've played a lot of football and you've lived it because of your dad, because of your environment, you've seen good and bad. You've seen what it takes when guys do get down. And I think the reality is it's rarely – it's rarely the physical ones, Dane. It's rarely the ones where you, the players aren't good enough. It's rarely where there's a lot of things that have to do with the actual X's and O's. It, it really is between the years. Like we're really talking about, and I, I know people don't like to hear about execution, they, but, but when you play football, there, they, I mean, even when you eat, when you sleep, when you travel, it's just, it is a thing that, that exists for you guys. And I think that somehow when I watch it and when I see it dismantling, especially in the fourth quarter, and especially in the fourth quarter, to me, it seems more 
about uh, the, the the mental aspect of it. And that can always be addressed in, in, the, in the one reason, there are a couple of reasons why, but I think you have great ownership. I think you have a coach that players want to play for. And I think they have a guy like you and no one wants to win more than you. Right. Yeah, no doubt. And you hit the nail on the head there. It's not, we haven't been outplayed or anything in any game. You know, it's just, it simply does come down to the execution. And I, I know that's not like the sexy talking point and all that, but that's the fact of the matter. You know, we, we talked, I've talked to a couple of the guys and it were, you know, it's at the point where there's nothing else to say. Now we just got to go do it. You know, everyone knows what we got to do. No, nope. the best thing that's happening is nobody's pointing the finger. Nobody's, um, nobody's forming small groups saying, Oh, if we just do this, we just do that. Everybody's still sticking together, which is exactly what you want through it. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think there's going to be lessons to learn through this. I think we're learning them every day. Um, and I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason in life and in football. So um, does this lesson that we're learning right now suck? Yeah. Do we want to be 4-0? and Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, at the end of the season, I think what we're going through right now is preparing us for the end of the season and what, and what we can be. And uh, I think we're going to be better for, for what we're learning. Yeah. It's, I mean, and this is, um, this is a volatile league. Stuff happens quickly. I mean, I've been a long time uh, friend of Kahari Jones, so I, I wasn't thrilled to see what happened this past week where he, he doesn't have his job. But that doesn't mean he's not a good pro. And that doesn't right. mean that guys didn't want to play for him. Uh, Trevor Harris sure wanted to play for him. A lot of guys in that room still liked him. So, so as you mentioned, it's, and it's not it a point lost on me, which is the, 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 the clique mentality, that w- which can creep into your dressing room if certain guys get involved in a certain personalities align themselves they can create more problems than than, than other teams it, it can be like a and people say cancerous and i know it can be a, offensive or something i had cancer so i can kind of say that so 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 you look at it and you say to yourself okay do we still have everyone on the same side are we still on the same page and you're saying yes yeah oh that's there's no doubt i think you could ask everybody on the team that question um we we don't have we have some big personalities on the team, but we don't have anybody whose ego is better better than the next person or bigger than the next person. So um, I think that's something kind of just that Coach O has done a good job with um, in the past couple of years, just kind of building the culture in the locker room. Too, he's a big proponent of you know things that happen in the locker room. Like he he doesn't even know some of the things that do happen because good locker rooms don't let that stuff get upstairs to the coaches. You know. Um, I think we have a great locker room and we kind of police ourselves and it's just, you know, it is what it is. That's kind of our culture here. And that's kind of just what we do. So um, that's the biggest thing though, being in these situations, um, whether being like a ball boy on my dad's team in the past or being in in a similar situation, like in college, that's the one thing you can't have is guys ganging up and, and saying, well, we should just do this. We should call this play. We should call that play. And the best thing is we don't have any of that. So um, I think everybody's on on board. Um, we just we just want to get out there and, and play again and get a chance to go win a ball game. And uh, we're we're really looking forward to Saturday. Well, you know the other thing that you bring up, and and, and I'm the son, uh, son of a coach as well. So when you're ingrained in it, when you live in it, you kind of have seen it all, and you also see it from the coach's standpoint, even though he's your dad. And I'm just curious, um, you know, uh, growing up, did you? ever you know at some point understand i mean you know when you're a ball boy and you're a kid you're running around it's one thing but then you get to that point where you start to become pretty good where you start you're you're in you're in high school now and you're starting to understand that you're going to probably play at this level did you ever sort of intellectualize or experience a situation that was similar to this that your dad had was there was there a team that your dad had that started to spin its tires a little bit whatever word you want to put on it underachieve and then turn turn it around is there something that you can fall back on you go yeah i know what this looks like because i saw it before have you seen it before yeah i have um one the last year my dad was at um arlington seguin when he was offensive coordinator um i believe i was in sixth or seventh grade so it was probably 2006, 2007. Um, he had a really good quarterback, um, senior quarterback coming back. His name was Brandon Clausen. I'll never forget it. And uh, <laughs> he had been in the offense for a couple of years. And first game of the year, he goes and breaks his leg. Um, just a freak hit, broke his leg out for the season type thing. And a uh, kid that came in, his name was Bobby Joe Barrett. We'll never forget him. And uh, he, uh, first couple of games, you know, like he wasn't prepared to play type thing. Uh, so they dropped a couple games, kind of similar situation. 
And uh, then lo and behold, they started winning, won one game, won two games, won a couple games in a row. And then uh, they were two games away from the state finals. They, they eventually did lose in the playoffs, but it's a very, very similar story to what you're talking about. And I think kind of what I'm talking about here is being that young kid, being on the sideline and really being, you know, my dad's son. I know, I know how this can affect players, yes, but also I know how it affects coaches. And, and uh, one thing we always talk about being a coach's kid is like, yeah, it's some stuff stays at the facility and stuff like that. But no matter what, some of the, some of the stress, some of the fatigue, some of whatever from the season is going to come home too. So I think I, I understand kind of how the coaches are dealing with that. And I think they know that I understand that too. Yeah. And I, I think that, that, that your guys do too. And I look, I, I know that this thing is going to turn around and it's, it's, and it, what's hard sometimes as an athlete uh, is, you know, you win, you win one game and people say, Oh, don't, don't, don't say the one game at a time. Please don't say one game at a time. Yeah. But you, you don't get three, you don't get to win one, you get three wins. You, you only right. have that in front of you. So I'm just curious, you know, see, to me, I think the worst game I hate golf is annoying. I play it, but golf is super annoying. And let's yeah. just say you, you, sometimes you can play pretty good, but maybe you hate water. And so you're having a good round and then you get up and you, maybe you're not familiar with the, 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 the layout of the 10th the hole. And there it is. There's the water and you've been fighting yep. it. And so, so to me, for you guys, the water is like the fourth quarter. So now you're going to get out there. You're going to probably possibly have a lead. You're going to do what you always do. And then here comes the fourth. Here comes that, that hole with the water on it. So how do you get yourself around this? How does Dane look at this and go, okay, all right, we've been here before. How, how do you think you will change that? Yeah, I think, I think yes, uh, two days ago, we had a really good practical example of it. Um, I think it's what we're going to do all week, and I really like it. Coach O, uh, usually we don't stop practice, right? Like, you, you got the script and you go through practice, all that. Well, yesterday and, and the day before, uh, he actually stopped practice, made everybody get off the field, go into the locker room, basically to simulate a halftime. And then we had uh, two periods still left to simulate the third quarter and the fourth quarter. So um, was it a little weird and caught us off guard a little bit, but like that's football, you know, so the, something's going to happen in a game that you're not prepared for. It's all about how you respond to it. So I think, um, I think even from the top down, Coach O is trying to do the best job he can to prepare us to um, not just play the fourth quarter on Saturday night when we go play the fourth quarter, right? Um, he's, he's doing everything he can in his power during practice to help simulate the third and the fourth quarter. So um, I, I think we for sure bought in on that, and um, I think you'll see something on, on Saturday. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that he's still here because, as you understand, when you start doing well in coaching, I don't care where it is, you know, people are always aware of who's doing what. And I thought maybe after the, the last great cup of parents that maybe we wouldn't see him. Like maybe he would get an offer, go back out to the West Coast. Maybe he goes back out to the state of Washington because someone can always use a good mind like his. So I was just – I was thrilled that, that we got him back because it is always possible in, in professional football and you just never know what high school or prep school. Or, like, you just don't know who's looking at you. Next thing you know, you know, you're at Montana State. Like you just don't know. So I was right. thrilled that Coach O came back. Yeah, me too. Um, and, a, and a small known fact, I, I don't know if many people know, but um, the first year that I came up in 2017, um, Coach O was the coach that ran the scout team for me. So um, he was actually the first coach besides June, um, June Jones that I met in Hamilton. So um, I've known Coach O for a long time now. And uh, yeah, I definitely saw his reports and stuff too. So I'm, I'm super thankful he, he's decided to stay. I think he's going to be here for a while, you know. I mean, you never know, like you said, with pro sports, but uh, I'm super thankful for him every day. I, I, lo I love everything he's about. And I always tell people this, too. The biggest thing that I, that I do love about Coach O is not anything football-related. I, I think it's that he's a great leader of men. Like, I think if we were out there doing anything and he was our leader, we, we would do it to the highest of the ability just because he has that ability about himself to, to generally – connect with guys from all over the world, all over the, all over this country and get them to all pull in the same direction. So I think that's a pretty unique um, skill that not everybody has. And uh, I really respect him and love him because of that. Yeah. It's uh, it's a great thing. As I said, you also have that perspective of, of, you know, when, when you're the son of a coach, you also meet other families who you meet their sons and you meet their wives, you meet their kids and you all kind of have this understanding of sort of what it's like to, to live in that. But it's a very special thing. Like to me, I, I've embraced it. I said, uh, my dad's still around. He's still a huge Ticat fan season ticket. He's a huge Dane Evans fan. 
So he's uh, he's uh, he's cheering for you every week, and I know we all will. So I'm just I'm just thrilled uh, that we could have this time with you this morning because it's as I said, the first time was a couple of years ago when I talked to you, and of course I hadn't seen you without the helmet, so <laughs> I was expecting the hair. I I, yeah. I, I, I said I mean I'm a little sad. There's no hair, and you said you're sad. You should see my wife. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's officially, it's officially gone. It's a uh, <laughs> dome for a while now. So, <laughs> well, look, a couple of championships ought to fix that one. I think yeah, they'll, there you go. they'll bring the love back. Hey, you take care. Thanks so much. It's always great to see you and hopefully we get a chance to talk to you again sometime. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for having me on and Oski Wee Wee, man. Appreciate it.